contrary to popular belief, society does not value art. On any given day, your average American, or European, or even Asian, will get out of bed, put their clothes on, and travel to a meaningless job, one that they probably hate. Many people just think working is a fact of life. There seems to be a consensus, among Americans especially, that working hard is a virtue, regardless of the type of work involved. There is no room for creativity, innovation, or free thinking of any kind. Money, in and of itself, is the enemy of artistic expression, due to the fact that it causes people to neglect their natural talents. Art is the enemy of profit and consumption. Just by turning on the television, it is clear that society's values are, at best, shallow and superficial. There are many commercials for cars, for lipstick, practically every kind of consumer product available. Instead of focusing on issues that actually matter, such as war, disease, poverty, the media chooses to focus on things that will make money. The desire for profit clearly more valuable than the desire to make a difference. Companies will try to sell anything, no questions asked, in search of making as much money as possible. There is a great sickness within the American culture, within the majority of cultures. All societies, Western and Eastern, place little value on, on art. Some politicians will blame capitalism, others will blame socialism, but both opinions are misguided. Most economic systems, socialist and capitalist, suppress art in their own way. On one hand, capitalism produces a world that creates inequality, but on the other hand, socialism, though it might produce a type of equality, brings people down to an equal level of mediocrity. Both of these economic systems, on many different levels, suppress creative freedom. If something isn't valuable to an economy, if it doesn't directly stimulate economic growth, capitalism will not value it. Socialism will try to give everyone an equal opportunity, but by taking the ability to create from the average citizen, there can be no true innovation. Everyone has become a slave to a money-driven society. Most people think that because they have options, like choosing to work at Walmart, Target, Kroger, or any other corporate place, they are somehow free to do as they choose. There seems to be a limited amount of options, ranging from working as a cashier, or, if you're lucky enough, working in a kitchen, eight hours a day, five days a week, for the rest of your life. George Carlin, a once celebrated comedian, talked about limited options at great length, many times stating, the things that matter in this country have been reduced in choice. There are two political parties. There are a handful of insurance companies. There are six or seven information centers. But if you want a bagel, there are 23 flavors, because you have the illusion of choice. Carlin said that because people have limited options, they only have the illusion of free choice, not free choice itself. Throughout history, quite a number of artists and writers, both famous and unknown, have been suppressed by an unforgiving society, those including the likes of Van Gogh, Tennessee Williams, and, most notably, Edgar Allan Poe. Poe constantly struggled to make a living, often having to go months without being paid, and although he was raised by a wealthy, by a wealthy family, his adopted father left him no money. On October 3, 1849, Poe was found on the streets of Baltimore, in a state of madness, no clear explanation for how he had gotten there. Four days later, early in the morning, Poe finally died, alone and penniless. Poe contributed a lot to literature, writing some of the most original stories of all time. And despite all of that, society did not value what he did. His work couldn't be used in any practical sense, not for what was needed at the time, writing stories mostly seen as a hobby, something to do for fun, rather than something to do for a living. Society has never understood what the purpose of art is. Most people go through life, they work eight hours a day, and for all of that, they don't know what they're doing, or even what their true passion is. As children, they are told that they can be anything, artists obviously included. When they get older, 
they realize that their dreams can never be achieved at any point in time by any stretch of the imagination. All of them will go through life completely unprepared, their fantasies totally destroyed. Art is something people can't touch, much less feel, its purpose entirely subjective. To one person, art might be something fun and light, such as entertainment, while at the same time, art can be something serious and heartfelt. There are many differences between art and entertainment, some that many people choose to ignore. Art can be entertaining, sometimes very entertaining, but it really depends on the purpose the creator is trying to convey, whether he intends to create something meaningful or only intends to entertain. Most movies, television, novels, and even paintings don't truly capture what is important about the human condition. Measurement is not an easily defined term. Art can't be measured by any definable standard, none that would be of any use in determining its worth. Society has trained people to value material success, this kind of shallow materialism that will bring brief happiness but will eventually tear people apart. The power of art, true art, goes beyond what is simply material. Around the world, everywhere music is being played, people are listening to their favorite songs, some loud, some quiet, but all of them created for a specific purpose, to make people feel something. Society has never truly valued the power of emotion. Individuals are seen as numbers, one of many things to be used for profit, for as long as they can be considered useful, until the day when usefulness becomes useless. Society is, has, and will continue to neglect art. The idea that art can be valuable, much less profitable, is a very foreign idea, to the United States most of all. Most countries, some even more so than the United States, only value what can be measured. Complex, complex aspects of life, like emotions and creativity, are not taken seriously. The majority of people go about their day through countless hours of work only to realize that they were never truly living. For them to survive, life has to be made as simple as possible. If they would open their minds, they would realize that art is a way of capturing individuality by means of actually exploring ourselves, all that we are inside. The true purpose of art is, quite simply, to discover what truly matters.